I don't hear any music. Is there music in the background? I know we're live. I think we do. I lose it. There's no music. No music. Ooh. Hold on. <laughs> All right. For those who are now joining us, because we're 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 live. We're live on. on, on there we go. My heart and my soul is always at Rhythmia. Right now I'm in the jungles of New York City and I'm so grateful that I can continue to do these lives because Rhythmia always with that infinite heart beat. <laughs> oh, I'm getting some breath from that dancing. Um, that beat, that heartbeat, it always is beating, especially when we go home. And so the theme today in Under the Umbrella of Our Love is the returning home to the divine relationship with oneself. And especially today, we're going to hear how when you find yourself, you merge with your soul and you heal your heart. When you go home and you have a delicious partner to come home to, how all of that merges and dances. And so with that, I welcome you, Erica. Thank you so much. Happy to be here. So excited. Yeah. So Erica visited us um, in uh, July, right? Sometime in July. Yeah, Not about a month ago. Yeah, about a month ago. And um, I know Erica's partner. Um, she is a, uh, a force of nature, Tony Bergens. And Tony Bergens mm -hmm. and I have taught all around the world together. And so when Erica showed up at Rhythmia, I just felt this soulful, continuous sisterhood connection. So I'm so excited to hear more about your journey, both at Rhythmia and then now home, now that you're back home and everything that you have dreamt into action, having a dance here with us today. So welcome. 
Thank you. What a great introduction. And hello, everyone who's joining and watching live. Please add chats in there and interact with us. We love that. So Awesome. So would you, yeah, do you want me to just kind of start from the top or what, what would you like? Yes, I would love for you to share the, the golden nuggets at Rhythmia and then how, because it's always about 50% on the cosmic dance floor of Rhythmia grounds and then when we take it home. And you are such an example of someone who has taken the Rhythmia way home into your practice, into your mission in life. Definitely, definitely. So if you can't tell by uh, both the song and the fact that Parashakti just introduced my partner as uh, Tony, um, I'm coming at this from the queer angle. And for me, a lot of the healing work that I do in the world and in my life um, comes from some of the experiences I, that I've had living in a, in a lesbian body, in a queer body. Um, and so I am always looking for ways that I can uncover and, and reprogram some of the messages that I received when I was younger that just who I am at my core is not okay and who I am is not acceptable and not lovable as I am. And I need to change in order to be able to be accepted and loved and valued and welcomed and to have belonging. So, you know, I have, there's wounding I carry around, there's baggage that I carry around from that. And a lot of the work I do actually in the world is helping others who are also coming to discover that baggage that they have. And I don't think it's unique to the queer experience. Um, the more people I speak with, it, the more I realize everyone has something that in some some way we were told that who we were just wasn't okay. It could have been a parent told us that, it could have been some kid on the playground when we were young, right? But somewhere we all have these messages lodged in us that who we are isn't okay. And I think one of the benefits of a place like Rhythmia is that you get a chance to get beneath your mind and really dig into the deeper places where things have been stored. And that's what I that's what I found. I found that, you know, my mind has done a fantastic job of helping me process my past experiences, but there's still stuff deeper. There's stuff in my subconscious. There's stuff in my body. There's stuff in other places that my mind tells me, no, we're good. We've got this. We've got this all cleaned out. And when I, when I have an opportunity to go into deeper experiences, um, you know, plant medicine is a great way to access that place. Deeper meditation is a great place to access that space. The dance floor, you know, I, I'd be remiss with Parashakti here and my partner is Tony not saying the dance floor. Um, but any way that I can get beneath the, my mind, which is really just trying to keep me safe, right? Like I've had to learn that. My mind is really just trying to keep me safe and protected. And it learned from what happened in the past that the best way to keep safe is to really have a tight lockdown on things. And that's helpful in many ways, but it's also limiting in many ways. And I came to Rhythmia as part of my own journey that I've been on for a long time to just get freer from the internal lockdown and really open that up. I mean, I know who I want to be in the world. I know the love that I want to be able to share in the world. And whether that's with Tony or whether that's just with humanity. And I watch myself um, limit that sometimes, whether out of patterning or fear or conditioning or wounding or triggers or whatever, um, feeling not safe. And, and so that's a constant piece of work I do is how can I remove more barriers, remove more barriers, remove more barriers that just is going to let this this love, which is my natural state, which is the love coming through me from the universe. I just want to be a clear channel for it to come out and love on everyone and love on the world. So, you know, that's my work. My work is to keep that clear and make that as clear as possible. And that's how, you know, that's how a place like Rhythmia can help and has helped me. So we can't wait till Tony comes and visits us. And in the, yes. meantime, in the meantime, as you did this profound work, and I know that yes. Tony Bergens does profound work in her own right. How did the work at Rhythmia enhance, connect deeper you with your partner? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, like relationships are one of those things where they're such a, a they're a blessing to have. And I'm so super grateful to have one. But one of the challenges is that being that close and that intimate with someone else is like you start to learn each other's triggers very well and you end up becoming and I think this is intentional from a spiritual development perspective you're the person who can most bring into consciousness the things that are ready to be healed <laughs> and so Tony Tony does that for me and I'm grateful to her for it and I do it for her and we both are showing each other reminding each other of hey this is ready to be healed for you and so that's you know I'm always looking for ways that in my relationship I can, you know, I know how I want to be with the person that I'm with. I want to be loving. I want to be open. I want to be um, able to drop into a place of deep connection. 
But if I'm in a place of trigger, I pull back, I withdraw, like the fear makes me withdraw. And I was working a lot with fear when I was at Rhythmia. One of my, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure if you've been watching this, this show for a while, you know that there are these kind of three big intentions when you go to Rhythmia. One is show me who I've become. And when I was doing that piece of work, one of the awarenesses I had is that I'm living, I'm living in a vibration of more fear than I was aware of. And it showed me that. The medicine helped me see that that I was kind of deluding myself into thinking that, you know, I'm the self-righteous loving partner and it's Tony who's got all the issues. <laughs> and I'm sure she would say the same about me. But so like the medicine helped me say, well, hold on, hold on. Cause you know, you think you're all love vibration, but let me show you all the places in your life where you actually are still anchored into fear consciousness. And justifiably so, I can point to why that was and the medicine helps you see why you're living in fear consciousness, but it also offers you an invitation to no longer live in that fear consciousness. And that's what I got at Rhythmia. I got this invitation to say, now you can see it. Now you can see, you know, when you weren't admitting it to yourself, you weren't fixing it, you weren't working on it, you weren't allowing it to be released. But now that I can see it, I'm having to face that part of myself that is in fear and that is therefore reacting out of fear and kind of like, um, like lashing out from a fear protective place. And it showed me that and it then offered me like the next intention is merge me back with my soul at all costs. And, you know, the at all costs is is if anybody has uh, been to Rhythmia, that, that's one of the scariest parts is adding that clause at the end at all costs. Like, whoa, what am I signing? What does that mean? What am I what am I inviting in now if I'm saying at all costs? And uh, but that's the intention. And I was willing to to say I got to a point I was willing to say that. And then the last piece is heal my heart. And I feel like that trifecta, you know, showing me that I was living in a fear vibration, showing me the potential of releasing that and, and not having to do that anymore. Like that, that served me at a time, but it's not needed now. I really can be in the vibration of love that I want to be in. And part of that is the remerging with my soul. And I got to meet, you know, I got to re, um, re in integrate with my inner child. I got to bring her back in and, um, we had a beautiful reunion as, as part of one of the ceremonies. And then I was really able to get some healing from some things that um, when I came home, Tony was very pleased to see that certain things that I react to out of wound, out of woundedness, um, I was able to get some healing of those. And therefore, you know, I was able to come back a much gentler, you know, less, less, less triggerable, triggerable person, <laughs> trigger, triggerable, triggerable, less triggerable person. So those are a few, a few of the things I can, I can share more, but that's a few. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You know, um, you have such a big mission and I know you've even written a book about it. So how has this, this mission even more grown after doing the work at Rhythmia? Yeah. So, um, so I, I did, I wrote this book called gay, the pray away and my work in the world right now is kind of as a spiritual counselor, coach speaker. Um, in, I'm an interfaith minister and I really focus on the queer community because many of us have been harmed by kind of traditional religion or narrow, narrow minded dogmatic interpretations of religion. I don't believe all religion has to be that way or is that way, but some is, and it can be harmful. And, I went through something called conversion therapy when I was younger, when I was 18. And that is, um, that's a, it's a, it's an attempt to change someone's sexual orientation or gender identity due to the belief that who you are isn't, isn't what God would want for you. So having endured that earlier in my life, I've always been passionate about a, my own healing. Like, I don't, I don't want to be defined by that. I want to be able to live a joyful life where who I am is, um, I'm happy with who I am and I'm able to radiate that love and acceptance into the world. But the challenge is I had internalized a lot of those messages and that's what I've come to discover in my adult life is that a lot of those messages given to me from the outside, you know, this is what I was saying at the beginning, even though my rational mind would say that's ridiculous. Of course, that's not true. Subconsciously, I had still taken those messages in and created a belief system around them that was running my life. And what I find in my work is that many of us in the queer community have that. A lot of us are struggling with that. A lot of us are carrying that around. And at Rhythmia, uh, one of the questions I came in with for the medicine in my journey was, you know, is this work still relevant? Is this work still needed? You know, I'm, I've been doing this work. Is the queer community all set? Like, do they have enough places to go? Do they have enough support systems that I, you know, is this work still needed? And it was beautiful and 
fascinating that there just happened to be the week I was there, there just happened to be three other pockets of gay people. There was a gay male couple, there was a gay female couple, and there was a, another guy there, one of our, um, one of the people who was there was also from the queer community. And each of them, I found myself inter interacting with and talking to, and we were all working on a piece of this work. Like all of our journeys, where our journeys had similar threads, was that we were all working on dredging out some of that old messaging of like non-acceptance or internalized homophobia that we're holding against ourselves or internalized self-hatred. And for many of, of us, like one of the guys I spoke to, he really shared that he didn't think that's why he was there. He hadn't come in with the awareness that that was a core challenge or issue for him. He thought there was other stuff he was working on. And he found while he was in ceremony that, wow, he had a piece of that too. And I, I do believe that many of us in this community still have it lodged somewhere. I mean, society, culture, it's, it's really hard to look around. You don't see 100% acceptance, even if you have your pockets of acceptance. And there's so much research about what one accepting adult can do for a LGBTQ youth. It's true. And there are still times when we internalize the parts that aren't accepting, the people that aren't accepting, the messages that aren't accepting. And so a, a lot of my work intersects with this work that Rhythmia is doing. It, there's a complete synergy between the mission I'm on, which is to help people liberate themselves from these internal uh, limitations and limiting beliefs, limiting beliefs about themselves, which is exactly why Rhythmia exists in the world and why I was so just inspired by listening to Jerry, listening to the guest speakers, meeting the other people there, because everyone shares the same common mission of getting free, free on the inside, because we all know that free on the inside leads to freedom everywhere else. It's, you know, sometimes we think it's the other way around. If I can just get, if I can just get free on the outside, right? If I can just get free, like meaning the kind of work I want in the world and the kind of relationships I want in the world, like all of these things that we do out here to try to build a, a system of comfort and freedom, then I'll find the peace and happiness in here. And I love that Rhythmia goes about this differently and says, you know, it's the inside, do the inside. Because once you liberate in here, the rest of the world becomes a liberated place. That's the vibration you're putting out there. And therefore it all around you is just, it's a completely different way of seeing the world and things show up differently in the world. When I show up differently, the world shows up differently. So I found it to be really synergistic with my work in the world of being like, um, my partner, Tony, Tony calls it uh, that I'm an internal change agent. I love that term, an internal change agent, or inner change agent. And I like I embrace that. I'm I really am on a mission to help people with inner freedom because we can't control what the world is doing. I can't control the fact that there are still some religious establishments that don't accept who I am. Um, you know, to get a little bit more personal, I can't accept the fact that or I can't I can't change the fact that even my own family, in some cases, still clings to some of their religious beliefs that would put me in a position of being um, not okay. So I can't change that. But what I can change is my own internal liberation. I don't have to hold that against myself anymore. And I'm grateful to places like Rhythmia that share that common passion for let's get free, whatever it is, whatever your thing is that's limiting you, let's, it's time. It's time to send that, you know, let that go. And it's not violent. It's not like forcefully send that out. It's like lovingly and gently say, thank you I release you. Thank you for all you've done for me. You've played a role in my life. And I'm now ready to evolve beyond that and be more of who I need to be in this world. Because <laughs> look around, the world needs us. <laughs> Every one of us, the world needs us to be to be shining our light, the most vibrant and beautiful and light it can be. Ah, Erica, you've said so many things that are giving me just that rising heartfelt sense of freedom. Um, and I agree with you. It's really just reconnecting to, to oneself first, connecting yes. to that merged heart, that freedom of love so that then we can truly love the world and, and just acceptance, absolutely yes. pure acceptance. And I feel that you embody it, you dance it, you bring it in your life and to everyone around you and your light shines ever so bright. And so I'm so grateful that you joined us here today with such great wisdom and you are an alumni. So you are coming back. Yeah, <laughs> We're both on the East coast and I so look forward to seeing you and Tony very soon. And I'm so grateful that you graced us again, just with your wings of freedom and liberation and everybody as, as you see, um, 
she <laughs> she merged with her soul at all costs and mm -hmm. she healed her heart and she came home in a new way and that's what we celebrate is that miracle of life at rhythmia and can, so thank you can i jump can i jump in and say one more thing i know i hear you on wrap up mode but let me say one last final thing really quick yes. so the cool thing about this experience is that it it stayed with me like one week after I got back, I just want to share this part of the story. One week after I got back, I felt like I was already kind of slipping into old patterns. Like I felt myself getting back into old irritabilities and old things. And something happened to me exactly one week after I got back where I felt like I was just, I, I was face planted in the bed. I just needed to sleep for a whole day. And I put on one of the playlists from, from Rhythmia, from the journey at Rhythmia. And I just allowed myself to go back into that space. And I felt like I felt like the medicine was actually still working in me and I felt her kind of take me back in and say, let me remind you of everything that we just did and everything we just learned because I've got you now and we're working together now and I'm not letting you go back. I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to keep you remembering where you want to go and where you're going. And so I just want to say that, that like that happened to me a week later, I was back in a, I felt it. I felt like I was back in and getting a reminder and a refresher. So I'm excited to feel like it wasn't just a, a one-time thing that, you know, whatever. If I felt like it's an ongoing journey that now I have another tool in my toolkit from, on this journey that I'm on of, of life, so. Absolutely, the medicine lives inside of us. So yes. We, we drink it and once we gather in ceremonial space in that way, it's in us. And so thank you for sharing your medicine. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. And so thanks, to, thanks to Rhythmia for creating an amazing space of transformation. It's, it is, it's a beautiful container they've created. Yay. Thank you so much. Can't wait to have you back. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thank you for joining. Yay.